For it is he who gives you power to get yours, that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Now let's tell it to God this morning. Lord, because you have promised or because you have made covenant to our fathers, let your command begin to come from in our life in the name of Jesus. Carry your 
us to open our Bibles to Psalms 47, verse 4. Psalms 47, verse 4. I'll read from the TPT version. Psalms 47, verse 4. He says, He's mapped out our inheritance ahead of time, putting us in the front of the line, honoring Jacob, the one he loves. May God honor us in Jesus' name. So we're going to pray this morning. The Father, open my eyes to see my inheritance in you. The things you have marked out for me. In the name of Jesus. Father, open my eyes to see my inheritance in you. The things you have marked out for me. In the name of Jesus. Your word says that he has marked out inheritance ahead of time. Putting us in front of the line. Honoring Jacob the one he loves. God, it is time for you to honor us this morning. Father, open our eyes to see our inheritance in you. The things that you have marked out for us, church, as individuals, Lord, open our eyes to see them. In the name of Jesus, your word says that the eyes of their understanding is enlightened. And he also says in another version that light is flooded, that they are flooded with light. So we're opening our mouths this morning, Lord, asking that you open eyes to see our inheritance uh, that you are that which you have willed for us that which you have willed ahead of time for us father open our eyes to see them in the name of jesus uh, the things that you have marked out for us uh, the things that you have marked out for me the things that you marked out for the church father open our eyes to see them in the name of jesus just as we have gathered today this morning uh, to pray to you in agreement lord you said that you would answer us uh, father open our eyes lord that we may see the inheritance that you have marked out for us uh, ahead of time lord father we pray for understanding open Lord that there is no more blindness that every veil that is blocking the inheritance that we have you father remove it now in the name of Jesus that we must begin to see clearly that we begin to see clearly that which is our inheritance Lord Masadaya Baba the things that you have marked out for us Lord open our eyes to see them Lord in the name of Jesus Masataya Bado Father, your word says that you are not Jacob, the one you love. Father, we are sure that we know that you love us. Father, honor your word and honor us, Lord, this morning. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, we're still praying. We're going to pray again. We're still praying about inheritance. And we're going to pray that, Father, bring me into my inheritance speedily. We've prayed, we prayed earlier that our eyes are open to see our inheritance. And now we are asking God to bring us to our inheritance speedily. In the name of Jesus. That not just that we see, but that we move speedily. We advance, we move, we move into that inheritance. We enter that inheritance where God has planned and prepared for us. That we enter that inheritance. That we are brought into our inheritance speedily in the name of Jesus. If there's one Bible verse that I like, it's about the it was about Jacob. I think it was about Jacob. And you know, he was selling, I think it was Isaac or Jacob. I can't remember that was saying that um, who is it in the queen? They asked her, who is it that has brought this to you? And he said that it is Lord that has brought it to me. That shows speed. And so we are asking now that Lord Jesus, uh, you bring us speedily to our inheritance. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, that we are brought into an inheritance speedily, Lord. In the name of Jesus, that thing that you have marked for us, that thing that you have marked for us. That that you have prepared for us as a church and in the 
individually Lord we move we move into it we enter into it in the name of Jesus this month has been declared as our month of advancing through prosperity and Lord in the, during the financial service the apostle said to advance means to change level to move into the next level Father we know that you are, you are your plans for us are of good and not of evil and so Father we move we move we enter that next level we enter that inheritance that you have prepared for us in the name of Jesus oh and I when people ask us how is it that you are able to achieve this how is it that you are able to do this we will say to the Lord that brought this to us that father will return the glory to you father bring me to my inheritance speedily in the name of jesus bring me to my inheritance speedily in the name of jesus for in jesus mighty name we are still praying quickly again let's open our bibles to psalms 87 verse 7 psalms 87 verse 7 I read from here. It says, but the singers and the players on instruments say, all my springs are in you. Psalms 87 verse 7 says, but the singers and the players on instruments say, all my springs are in you. We're going to pray this morning that Father, cause all my springs in you to begin to flow out. Let there be an overflow of inspiration. Let there be an overflow of wisdom. Let there be an overflow of resources. Let area, let every area of my life enjoy your springs. In the name of Jesus, Father, cause all my springs in you to begin to flow out. Oh, out of you, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. He says, let there be an overflow of inspiration. Let there be an overflow of wisdom, of resources. Let every area of my life enjoy your springs oh God in the name of Jesus that I do not lack inspiration that I have overflow of wisdom I have overflow of resources that because we have acknowledged that all our springs are in you Father cause it to begin to flow out cause it to begin to flow out let our life Radiate your beauty, Lord. Let there be an overflow, overflow of inspiration, overflow of inspiration that ideas begin to flow, ideas that I've never been taught of. Ideas that are new, they begin to flow out of us in the name of Jesus, that there be overflow of wisdom. That we grow in wisdom in the name of Jesus. That we do not lack. There is no lack in our lives. Let every area of my life enjoy your springs, oh God. Let every area of my life enjoy your springs, oh God. That all my springs in you begin to flow and let it begin to flow out Lord in the name of Jesus for in Jesus mighty name I still pray lastly we are going to pray this morning and we are going to declare that in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, I am the talk of the nations and I am the desire of nations. Oh, that in the name of Jesus, I am the talk of the nations. I am the desire of the nations. In the name of Jesus, can you declare that? I want you to declare it boldly that I am the talk of the nations and I am the desire of nations. That nations desire me. In the name of Jesus, I am the talk of the nations and I am the desire of nations in the name of Jesus. Oh, 
Radabandes Kapala Dianamba Sutande Lika Baraba Sutande O Mande Suka Barada Basantaya the Adaba Kabarada Basutunde Dianande Sutaya. Can we begin to release mysteries unto the Lord this morning? We have asked the Lord for inspiration. We have asked that the river never stops. We've asked that there be a river of inspiration, let there be a river of wisdom. Let it be a river of insight in the name of Jesus, O oh God. For out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. O Radabande Skapali Anande, Rukabanda Baskapali Adaba Sotondeli Kabanda Skatai, Lekura Bababa Bande Sotondeli Ede Bo Shantai Adada, Ilado Sotondeli Kabarabande Skapalia, O Rababanda Skapali, Da Sotondeli Kabaraba Sotonde, Rakaba. Basataya Nande Skopalia Elur Bababande Rokobo Sanamande I am a solution on the earth I am a solution on the earth I am a solution on the earth Ika Basoto Yanamande Karabasuto Nations come to my light Nations come to my light In the name of Jesus Karabande Skapalia Ura Bababababa For he that speaketh unto man Speaketh not unto Speaketh not unto man he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto man, but speaketh unto God. Can we begin to release mysteries unto the Lord this morning? For he hears us. Can we allow the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to take over this morning? Oh, Rada Bandes Kapalia, Uraba Santaya, and Urada Kabalando Sotondelia da Bakora Baba, Oh, Rabba Baba Bande, Uraba Santaya da Bakora Basantaya, and Lee Randes Kapali. Rada bako raba babande sataya ila sutonde likaba loko bara bande skapalia o raba babande skaya nande skapa urada ba ya da ba soto ya elari ba soto nde likaba raba ba 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 o santa ya nande sutonde liere de bo shana nande.
Spirit is born of your own Jesus. Can you just bless God this morning in tongues? Can you just pray from your spirit this morning? Zenevo kosh to him, zebra de kosh to suma kalabatai. Obrakata shinde kesuva hataya. E kapatani sefetesh di kama pradisha. Zola napata kavanda ya seketi bo shagata. O rapata neve sekete boko shata pataska. E patan de fekete shitos kapranda. E protesh ketiva kata. E katos kaprataya. E petos satafataya. E kapataya. Lepreketos katakataya. O pranda papa papa pasta. Zovele ketos. Zovele tekosha tapara. O kapana sakate shadava. Surrendering it to God and letting God lead on the way. And it says, when he holds your hand, everything becomes possible. I pray for someone this morning that everything becomes possible for you from now in the name of Jesus. As you yield and submit to the will of the Spirit, everything becomes possible in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we thank you this morning. Bless you for your word. Bless you for this wonderful atmosphere. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the stirring of the waters this morning. Thank you for sending your angels into our midst. Thank you for the release of blessings. Thank you for the great things that are going to unfold from the service from this gathering. Thank you for not making it just a normal gathering. Thank you for staying and being in our presence. We appreciate you, Lord, for all of this. We return all the glory to you, Lord. And this morning, I ask that you grant all trans to communicate your word effectively in the name of Jesus. And for everyone here, you grant us understanding by your spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you're happy to be in God's presence, can you jam your hands together and celebrate God this morning? You can do better than that. You can do. You are strengthened to do better than that. Amen. All right, let's.
let's have our seats. Let's have our seats in God's presence. Um, it feels so good to be back and to see us again this morning. Um, we thank God for the things that He has done for us as of last Sunday. We thank God for the supernatural service. The month is our month of advancing through prosperity. And we understand that advancing there means moving to the next level through prosperity. And we are grateful for the things that God is going to do in our midst and in our lives in the name of Jesus. Last Sunday, our highly esteemed man of God was here. And we talked about the glory, the gates, and the glory. And we thank God because he was a very powerful service. And um, we are more than assured that things have shifted. That gates have been, the heads of gates have been lifted. And it is our season of manifestation. Can someone say it is my season of manifestation? This morning I'll be speaking on your God your income and your future. I have two opening texts here this morning. The book of Romans chapter 9 verse 15 to 16. Romans 9 15 to 16. I read, For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. So then it is not of him who wills, nor of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy. The second scripture is Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Thank you, Jesus. Jeremiah 29. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. Another version will say to give you an expected end. Your God, your income, your future. First of all, I'm going to be speaking on your God. And I'm going to emphasize four points here in relation to your God. It's going to be very important that you follow me carefully this morning. And if you're online, if you're quite a young person, and when I say quite a young person, I mean you just started to transition in life this is very important. Number one, you must obtain the mercy of God early. Are you with me? I'm forever grateful that you have been faithful to That song has been locked up in my spirit since ha, I've been looking for my key. <laughs> so that I don't I don't I don't get lost. The, the song I've been struggling to move on in this summer, but that song has just been in my spirit. And I know I must sing it, I must give it voice before I'm able to proceed. The 
opening scripture we read reveals that God will show mercy to whom he wishes to. The interesting part about God is that God does not need to call a council meeting to decide whether he should lift a man or to decide whether he should bless a man. It is an independent decision of God. <laughs> Amen. An independent decision of God. And that scripture says, God chooses who to be compassionate to. And he chooses who he will show mercy. That is, no man can go and influence God. That you reported are to him does not affect whether God will show mercy to her or not. Are you with me? Let's see Psalms 90 verse 14. Psalms 90 verse 14. It says, Oh, satisfy us early with your mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. I think it was last week I saw the scripture again and I was thanking God that I saw the scripture earlier because there was an emphasis here on this person saying satisfy us early with your mercy. So he meant some people experience mercy not at the early stage of their life but they experienced mercy maybe at the middle stage of their life. Some they experienced mercy at the ninth stage of their lives. And you know in this part of our world we are quick to say some things and say that is how God wrote the person's destiny. Because the verse 16 of where we read says that it is not of him that will. It is not of him that runs. It says it is of God that shows mercy. That is he that runs that he will become successful at that thing. It's not because he's running. The person that has a will or that has the will or the drive to be what they want to be. Oh, I want to be this. I want to be that. There's that passion. There's that vision. I want to build this, do that. There is a will. But God is saying it is not of will. It is not because you have the will you will get it. He's saying it is because I showed mercy. I was willing to make it happen for you. Are you with me? So, you now understand why I said satisfy us early with your mercy. Means that from a very early stage in my life, Lord, be willing so that ah, there is there's a word that someone used to say as a prayer, they will say, Do you know the meaning? You will not have dreams, visions, desire, and they will just be inside of you. You will not see them. Amen. And what makes that happen is that the Lord satisfies you early with mercy. He says that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. That what you should have achieved at 30 according to God's plan, according to how your life and destiny has been structured, it is not that at 50, at 60, you are running to achieve it. We thank God. It still happened during the lifetime. But it did not happen when it should happen. Truly, God can 
will call us into ministry anytime. Sorry I'm using ministry as an example. But won't it be surprising that God called the age of 60 in this and our present age and time into ministry? Even scripture says, serve the Lord when it is still early, when you have the strength, the time, serve the Lord then. So what happened? It is that mercy was not shown to that person then. Are you with me? Satisfy us early to mercy. The difference between those lifted and those below is mercy. And that verse is a prayer point that you must pray to obtain mercy from God early in life. The example of the person that I said God used starts called at the age of 60. If you have studied the pattern and the trend of those that God used mightily in life, God called them very early. At a very young between the ages of 18 to 25, that's when God arrested them. And then they had labored in the things of God and had grown. God had taken time to give them. And then we have, So the person that started 60, God may show mercy, God may restore, but you know that impact can be the same. You must live your life empty. You must live your life to the fullest. You must be all that God has called you to be. But the way that will happen is that God must satisfy you early with mercy. Do you know what it means to be satisfied? You know how you feel when you meet and have fun. That is, you must be so endowed with the mercy of God. Amen. Time will not permit me to go into, you know. Many people may not agree with what I was saying. Well, it's not my business if you don't agree. <laughs> I will say what I want to say. For some people, they need to pray mercy for their whole family things that their families, family, family, father, father, father has. I'm not saying that God has not died on the cross for you. But I'm saying that there are things that have been done. That the mercy of God will first have to deal with it so that you can be free. Then you now have to pray for mercy so that you can be early in life. Satisfy me. Satisfy us early with your mercy. Our earliest man God has spoken about the power to be on time. To be on time in life. To not be delayed. It is this mercy that makes you to be on time. Have you seen people that many things happen to them early? The rose early in life. They are not God can do it with your life, and God wants to do it with your life. But you must continually pray that God should satisfy you early in life. If you feel like time has gone, amen. God can still do something. Are you with me? We don't need the mercy of God because we sin alone. You need the mercy of God to go to the next level. And you must keep praying for mercy, for the mercy of God every season of your life if you desire to go to the next level regularly. Amen. And number two, under your God, you must constantly fill your atmosphere with the presence of God through praise. We know that God dwells in the praises of his people and every time you praise God, God's presence will be evident in your atmosphere. 
one thing that we must stop doing at this stage as believers is to quit complaining. Amen. Do you know if you have a neighbor that you live together in the house that is always complaining, you know you'll be avoiding the person. Because what that person is bringing is negative energy. You enter the house, come, you know, this one, that one, you know, that one, you know, you know. So, anytime you now, the two of you being there, you now be watching each other. Ah, what is it, Lord? Has it gone? What is it? Let me just wait small. Let me go to work. Oh, yeah, you two, you now quickly run. Boom. Why? Because you are trying to avoid that negative energy. So, when you complain, what you are doing is that you are creating a negative energy around you. Even when it is not going well, what is expected is that it is God's promises and God's word. Even now, if all you say is it is well, it's still better. Eh? Than Shebaim is in English, is this how my life works? You know, English is not, it doesn't paint it so well. Amen. Quit complaining. Sing praises to God regularly, appreciating for all He has done for you. And praises draws God's attention to you. Simple but powerful. Number three, enforce God's promises to you. In prayers. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10 to 11. It says, For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth. And make it bring forth and bore, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I, I sent it. Another version says it shall be fruitful. Amen. So, God's word is potent enough to go into your life, to come into your life and to produce the result of what he has said. But, you must enforce God's promises to you in prayers. Don't only tell God what you desire in prayers. Enforce his promises to you in prayers. Let's say once God has given you promises, you don't now pray it back to God and say, God, you said this, do it. Because the word of God says that the word and the things God has said to you is enough to do. Right? Now it is now time for you to take that word because it is God's word in your mouth. It is as potent as God saying it. Your prayer now changes from God doing this to I declare this happens now. I call this into manifestation in the name of Jesus. It is now you enforcing it. Have you seen a last man agent or a police officer that has been given the authority to enforce something? We will now say, let me first go and ask Oga. Maybe we can do this. No. He knows that whether Oga is there or not, as long as I am in this, of, on this uniform, as long as the law has empowered me to do this, you must respond to it. And that is what happens when you have the promises of God. They are strong enough to do things in your life. It's just that many people forget them, believing that they will just happen. But listen, you must enforce them in prayers. You must enforce them in prayers. You just wake up, God has given you promises about certain things, about your work, about your life, about this, about that. You declare them. You continually sit there. You continually make a declaration and pray about them. It is all you need to have. Are you with me? His promises are yea and amen. That's what he says. Your promises are yes and amen. 
Amen. Hallelujah. God's promises are yes and amen. Learn to declare the scriptures revealed to you during your prayers. Sometimes I've realized that my declarations are longer than my prayer's time. Because I have so many backlog of scriptures that I have not seen in my life. So I, I first take time to quote them. Because some self you will forget. And what has happened, let me tell you something. The promises that you fail to capture in your mind, you won't see it. You lost it. Are you with me? <laughs> if they write to me and they said they will give you 10 properties when they were doing the summary, Sister Jumoke has been given 10 properties. And the properties are when they now started listing the properties, they listed 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We stopped at 9. No, no, this tent one. Amen. And then they jumped. And the will has been signed. No, no, don't worry. That's what happened to you. Amen. The will has been signed. But in the summary, they said 10. But when they listed, they listed 9. How many properties does person have? 9. So you see that whatever happened is lost somewhere because it was not captured. It is not captured in your mind. You can't see it. Are you with me? You won't see if it is not regularly captured. See, that declaration we make, that we do, that one that we do every month, we send them, the reason why it is there is so that that thing will first affect your mind. It affects your atmosphere. And once your mind is in tune, God's word. It is easy for God's plans to flow. Because God can be saying, go to Lokota. But because your mind is not at that level to open up to anything, you say no. Amen. You say you can't marry pastor. Amen. I have come this morning again. Before I was not fully licensed. Now I'm fully licensed. I can praise God. Amen. God may not answer all your requests because some may not be his will for you, but he will always respond to his own words. That is something that God will do. Amen. Some of you know how you hold your parents with their word. What you said. And the poor father, poor mother will just, will just be like, ah! He cuts me, cuts me, cuts me. Amen. I said, you said this, you said that. And at this stage, you can't be saying, I didn't say it. Maybe when you were small, you can say, I didn't say it. But now they know you're an adult. And at this point, everybody will just have to be just God and say, I can say it. And how much more God, how, like, what of God? God has said that his words, that he has spoken. He says they will go out and accomplish their task. I love that version so much. Those words are sent to accomplish something. So when a new word comes into your life, rejoice about it because they are going to accomplish their task. It says they will be fruitful in where I send them to. It says they will not return back to me void. That's the words that God spoke to you. Amen. So in case you have not seen some things, just see those words. Amen. A child who has been given a will or has been told that until he gets to this age, that's when he can have access to it. Anytime they ask, do you have, I have property. Where is it? It's in the will. Amen. Is it not in the will? 
it has been willed to him now. His name is there. It has been signed. It has been read. They kept it somewhere. In fact, they have even recorded the speech that day. And they asked, where is this in the will? Just give it time. I know when I will come into possession of this property. That's the same thing about God's word to you. You know the funniest thing? We've not lived... I know I preached about mercy, satisfy yourself, but how long have you lived in life that you are so tired and worried about something? How long? How many years? Amen. <laughs> 120 years, me to say that. Amen. The pressure that we put ourselves under. someone says something recently and he said it is because you compared with someone that's why you felt this way and I, I sat and I thought about it ah, and it's true you actually looked at someone else that's why you thought what you, you are doing is small we are not saying be complacent but I'm saying trust God's word amen number four patience and master the hearing from God to have the leading of God. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21. Whenever you turn to the right and or whenever you turn to the left, praise God. How many of you are yes, 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 Lord, where you are going? I are just going. Turn to the left. Turn to the right. How many people? Yes, yes. But what this generally means is to be instructed and to be led by God. All Christians should be able to hear God. And Christians don't hear God because they are not taught or don't put to work what they were taught. As you pray to God, you must pay attention to the thoughts of your heart. You must pass the stage where you make statements like is it probably good? You make statements like I think it's my mind. Amen. We have the spirit of God. And it says the spirit of God in us bears witness with our hearts that we are sons of God. One of the easiest ways to know if what you are hearing is if the suggestion that came is not in alignment with the word of God. Are you with me? If, such, if you are praying and thoughts like still come, that God no, because you know, some people can say, Pastor spread, Pastor said, Whenever you're praying, pay at thoughts that come to your heart. If the thoughts that come to your heart is carry gone, if it is not in alignment with the characteristics of God, are you with me? You 
must be led by God. The speakings of God come through the silent thoughts of your heart. Amen. No, it's the middle one. Let's move to the next one. Your income. Your income. There is a difference between your sources of income and channels of income. I want you to follow me very carefully. See God as the source of your income. Amen. One second. Praise God. Like I said, see God as the source of your income and see your work as the channel of your income. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. Can we look at that? Philippians 4 19 it says, And my God shall do what? Shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So the source of your riches of your provision is who? Is who? I want you to repeat this. The source of my riches. The source of my income is God. And now I want you to understand this, that God will now use the work of your hands as the channel to get that riches and that increase, that income to you. Are you with me? So when we say that God gives you increase, we mean that from the work of your hands, you would experience increase. God has sent it. And then the way we make it happen is through maybe many more customers coming, maybe a promotion at work, maybe another side thing to do. That is the way God does it. But remember, I want you to remember this, that the source is God. Are you with me? The source is God. If God does not supply, there is no channel. Are you with me? This is the basic fundamental of, of prosperity, prospering through God. Once men can understand that the source of what they have is God, Let's go. We give our tithes to God because we see God as our source. We don't give our tithes to God because we are compelled or because, you know, it's a, it's a general thing to do. Are you with me? We give our tithes to God because He is our source. 
it is a way of honoring our source. Praise God. See God as your provider, not your job, salary, business, and boss. If you do, you will know that spending quality time with God in prayers and fellowship can hurt your income. Please don't enjoy this divine blessing because they don't, people don't, people, people, people don't enjoy this divine blessing because they don't listen to God's direction during their prayers or fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So when you're praying, God will show you where your increase will come from. If God, see, God will not do anything in your life without first saying it. And if he will say it, there is a wisdom to activate it. Are you with me? When there was going to be famine in the land of Egypt, he said it. And he supplied the wisdom to sustain and live through it. Are you with me? So, if we say that we are advancing through prosperity, it means God has done something to us. That is, God, our source, has sent more to us. And now we need the wisdom on how to activate what he has done. We need to know where the increase is coming from. And the way you will know is you will feel those thoughts those staring in directions once you focus your heart and you are praying about these things there's going to be a new light why not try it this way you've been doing this thing like this why not change the way you've been doing it okay talk to this person let me tell you something those thoughts may sound stupid and dumb but on the other side of the obedience lies your miracle How will you tell over a hundred thousand people to face the, the Red Sea and be going? I think as at that time they were still eager to give it to because it was children of Israel that crossed over that were stubborn. It's from that sea they should have started dying. Because they'll be like, water did not part away. But he said you should move. But you know, God has still done so many miracles, it was still fresh in their head. They found wealth. It, simple instruction. He said, tell them. Ask them for whatever it is you want before leaving. Imagine, ah, you know somebody that has learned to mind his business and, you know, is a humble, easygoing neighbor. I said, I don't want to stress my neighbor. When God said, ask them, me, I will ask. Even for uh, the head of something that we ask. As long as I know I need it, I want it. And God made them rich overnight. What are you telling me? So, as you fellowship with God this season, pay attention to instructions. Pay attention to the changes that come to your heart. Ask questions. Talk to people. There's going to be a nudging. You are not a blind child. You are a child of God. And you have the spirit of God in you that searches the deep things, even the deep things of God, and he makes them known to you. Amen. Holy Spirit can do all the Can you just whisper in your heart? Amen. Number two, trust God to give you divine increase. Thank you, Jesus. Psalms 1 and 15, verse 14. May the Lord give you increase more and more you and your children. When God gives increase, it will manifest as a job opportunity, investment opportunities, promotions at workplaces, more jobs at the same time. And I heard for someone, they're trying to sort out accommodation. I actually had new house. So, 
So, so I, you know, when I had new house, I had to go and see that the person would buy a house. But house, new house, new apartment, rented, but this new. You moved from somewhere to a new place. And the Lord will set to that for you in the name of Jesus. The Lord is working that out for you in the name of Jesus. Number three, receive divine teachings. Isaiah 48, verse 17. Isaiah 48, verse 17. It says, Thus says the Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit. Who leads you by the way you should go. Scripture says the labors of fools weary the soul. But the one that the Lord teaches to profit will always be in increase. So you must trust God to be able to teach you. You must trust God. See, let me tell you one of the ways you commit your finance to God that God is the one that will teach you. Eh? When and see, I, I'm, I'm becoming more careful preaching about some things because some people can be scold and but I believe that if it's working it's working. Amen. One of the ways you commit your finances to God eh, is when you first give to God your time. See people, I know people will tell you oh, people will say I'm experiencing increase with that. Yes, we know. But I'm telling you as a believer, the blessings of God, eh, that had no sorrow to it. So. Are you with me? One of the ways to enjoy it to the ultimate, and then the Holy Spirit begins to supply you insight on what to do with the rest. The Holy Spirit will teach you. Okay, this one do it like this. Okay, this one do it like this. When there's a new opportunity of increase, the Holy Spirit will inc- instruct you. See, there is there is something individual have to do to sustain their increase, to sustain the blessing that pro- pro- um, that opened up increase. Time is not time is not my friend. There's individual. We have our parts that God has ordained for us to enjoy increase, to sustain, because when a blessing comes upon your life and open up some, you must constantly do something to sustain that blessing and to keep it, to keep increasing that blessing, because it is not only prayers that can increase blessing, it is not only prayers that can sustain blessing. Abraham was such a system that God said, I will bless those who bless you. So it meant if I wanted to continue to experience blessing, all I needed to do was to bless Abraham. I didn't need to pray to God and say, God bless me. What I have done in turn is that I have said, God bless me. Abraham was such a system. And it's cause you needed. If you had, all you needed to do is just cause it. Amen. So for everyone, we must understand this. That to sustain blessings, there are things you have to do. God will teach you. Number four, use the channels or streams of your own. Understand the channels or streams of your income. Find out how those who are at the top in your industry are making or getting more money. Find out how the business side, find out the business side of whatever you are doing. That's how to increase the blessings. 
Whatever it is you are doing, understand the business side of it. Those that are in your industry, understand how they are making money. Are you with me? Understand how they are getting clients. Study the top guys. What are they doing differently? Because you'll be surprised that you are more sophisticated than some people. You'll be surprised that you, what is in your head is more than some people. It's just that maybe the container you are using to wrap it is what is no good. You must look into that part also. Number five, earn more than you spend. Many people spend more than they earn. So do you it? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I did not say the nation, I just said federal. Every nation has a federal government, don't <laughs> So, you see people that know the nation I'm talking about. I don't know, I just said federal government. I don't know what nation you are laughing about. But, you know, some nations will say they borrow. And every year they are always borrowing to fund the budget. So, they are spending their earnings. Then they affect everybody, they affect everything. Let your income grow by applying savings, and it is your savings from your income that is your own money. In all that you do, my brothers and sisters, avoid debt. Amen. <laughs> you back call it this. <laughs> In all you do, avoid debt. Because when there is debt, you will be working. Eh? Everybody will see that this guy is hard working, but there's nothing. Because everything you are making, what happened? You are using to pay debt. And the funniest side of it are those that borrow to pay and borrow to, you know, they borrow, ah, it's a cycle of borrowing. That's that God, anybody under that type of sin, God breaks it over your life in Jesus' name. Ah! Amen. They, those kind of people can have peace. Oh. Well, maybe now the federal government has been clamping on all this. Ah, I already said federal government, so they know it's the idea. So, federal government has been clamping on all these um, loan apps. If it was before, those people don't mind to say that you have died. They just post your. <laughs> it's crazy. You are to work and you're called your obituary. <laughs> obituary that you are dead. And they ask what happened. <laughs> Amen. Don't borrow to spend. Amen. Except the Lord instructs you to borrow. And before the Lord instructs you to borrow, the Lord has a channel that will pay back in future. Are you with me? Don't borrow to spend. You have to be very careful, please. Please. Number six, seek finance. Number six, rather, seek financial <laughs> information. Keep upgrading your earning knowledge and find out different ways to earn the more. I'm going to end with your future. I've spoken about your God. I've spoken about your income. We're going to run through your future. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. Time is far spent. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Your future is within you as a picture of what you become in days ahead. You know your future. There is an image of you that you have in you currently. That is your future. There is an image of this place that I have in me, that is the future. Some people will call it ambition, but it is God-inspired ambition. 
Amen. It is a God-inspired ambition. Five things to bear in mind about your future. Number one, keep improving. Some of you need to change the way you talk so that you can look like your future. if you say you are going to stand before kings and rulers and you sound like where will you go reap you amen and you know you are talking like that you will be surprised that the kings and rulers they will reap you, they will send you away amen some people need to change the way they talk, the way you dress, the way you appear. I'm not saying you must break the bank to or look like your future. You don't understand. This, I'm sorry. Ladies in the house, you know when a man is aspiring to his future, he, he, he starts, you know when he's beginning to look like his future. You know, let me tell you one story. One lady, it's not my wife. Many years ago, I said I wanted to do this, do that, do this. Boom, boom. Ah, and she looked at me, looked at me, looked at me. It cannot happen. It's now I know why. Because then I did not look like my future. You know, it was all talks. Are you with me? But it's just that she should know. Apply wisdom, they say it cannot happen. If you tell a man it will go, all is well. Let's move on. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but make sure you look like a future. You have to keep improving. Stop dressing like your colleagues, start dressing like those you admire. Technology industry, there are some people that they wear the same type of brown neck, the same color. I'm not saying that's what you should do because it can be reason as if you don't have clothes or something is wrong. So, no, I'm serious. We are in a very interesting part of the world. Start dressing like those you admire. Number two, develop favor character qualities. There are six character qualities that stream favor towards you always. Number one, the quality of diligence. Diligence here means hard work and consistency. We always love those that are consistent, those that are diligent. Number two, the quality of integrity. Having a good name, it will always bring you favor. Number three, the three number three, the quality of <laughs> this attempt to <laughs> the quality of humility the quality of humility number four the quality of loyalty to be reliable to trustworthy and stable don't be a very unloyal or disloyal person number five the quality of generosity generosity draws favor towards you it does not have to be so much but just be generous to people be generous at your level be generous with your time your connection your money Number five, the quality of appreciation or gratitude. Learn to appreciate people. These are the five qualities. The third thing I would say under your future is possess faith and patience. Many people lack faith. Many people have faith but lack patience. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are we together? The quality to be able to wait on the promises of God till they come into manifestation. Maybe because we're in Lagos, everybody's always in a rush. So we believe we can bring God to sometimes into that rush and just you know, rush through God, rush God, rush everybody. I know that in Lagos sometimes you have to be violent. Well, 
it's just no violence per se. You know, if I say violence, it may look like you are throwing blow. But you just have to be. They say rugged. Me, I'm not rugged. <laughs> you just have to bring in that spice. And then when you bring God into that spice, and you know, you have God. It's, it's your shame. God, if you don't do it, it's to your shame. But if you do it, it's to your glory. <laughs> <laughs> you've not heard men pray like that God if you don't if you're ashamed or is it that you're going to be ashamed and you know they try to blackmail God you know that Lagos attitude <laughs> praise God faith and patience we obtain these promises number four walk with the association, association that looks like your future Amen. Amen. See, what is the essence of many friends? If they don't look like your future, where are you all heading to? Amen. I'm trying to remember this Yoba adage. Um, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So 20 children cannot play together for 20 years. It's not possible. Go and check. If you are friends that you know you to talk to children that you we said that we, he was my childhood friend. Are you still friends today? Why? Because you probably don't look like his future. <laughs> it's the truth or they were not discerning enough to know your future so they assumed do you understand so <laughs> work with the association that looks like your future praise God I'm begging you make quality friends. Don't make friends for superficial reasons. His hair is blue. <laughs> or, or, or we watch K-drama together. K <laughs> it's those K-drama click that used to be so funny to me. You know, the crying click. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you are pointing to the ladies. I know of men that that yeah, also you know deliberate watch it. And you know, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not against. Please, please understand me. So that you see me watching Korean film. Not say. <laughs> Praise God. The last thing here is engage faith declarations. Your words impregnate your future. Get the church declaration and say it regularly. Turn every revelation about your future into your declaration. And what declaration does is that it breaks internal barriers in our hearts. Your words will give birth to what you said in times ahead. That's why your, con your, your, um, your faith confession must be consistent. For example, never say you are tired of life. For you will eventually. <laughs> Amen. I'm, I'm ending in a few seconds. You heard what I said? Never say you are tired of life because you will eventually. What will happen is that your because you don't understand that spiritual warfare is also in the words you say casually. And you have impregnated your future with scenarios that will make you tired of life. Whatever you want to see eventually is what you must say consistently. 
influence the time ahead with your words and keep saying whatever you see ahead. Amen. You have been instructed this morning. Can you just thank God for his word? Thank God for his word. Thank God for his word.
is opening up to you a stream of income. I see God doing that for you. In your heart, you've acknowledged Him as your source. He's opening up another stream, another opportunity for increase to you. In fact, I see that. Probably some conversations around it, and the Lord is bringing you to the fulfillment of that in a short way. Can we thank God for blessing us this morning? Can we thank God for blessing us this morning? Thank Him for blessing us this morning. For some persons, it's a fresh rain, rain of blessings upon you, rain of blessings upon your life. It's a rain of blessings upon your life. The Lord is raising a rain of blessings upon your life. And it's going to bring new things into your life. Those blessings are going to stream new things. New things that the Lord wants to do. They come with those blessings in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the glory. We bless you. We thank you for this privilege. We return all the glory to you. Also, Lord, we pray over our offerings. I declare they are blessed this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, meet everyone at the point of their needs in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Right, quickly let's give our offerings uh, we can package our offerings and you can send it to the church account number I'll just call it it's 091 089 Amen 091 089 999 Guarantee Trust Bank IOGCF Wonder Nation. I know for people, some people might wonder what's the F behind Abby. 